and gentlemen from New York City, Joe Garagiola! and welcome to To Tell the Truth. Now, if you're a faithful viewer of this show, you know that this game is played with one real person who must always tell the truth, right? And then two imposters who can lie right through their teeth, okay? Well, our first guest, he's made a career out of being the most outrageous imposter that we've ever come across on this show. And you're gonna see what I mean right after we meet our panel. Let's meet him now. Here is Nick C. Russell. Peggy Katz! Bill Cullen! And Kitty Carlisle! You don't like it down there? Well, in just one minute, we're going to meet a real imposter, and then we're going to meet our two imposter imposters. But first, let's say hello to our real, genuine panel here, our regulars of Cass, Cullen, and Carlisle. Let's forget for a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they always do that to me. And now, this week, we got the rare, very real Nipsey Russ. Indeed. Yes, I am here to set the record straight about sex appeal and a woman's weight. It's nice to be neat and look petite, but if you want to feel some heat, you got to have some meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and with that, let's meet a champion imposter. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Frank William Abagnale. Number two. My name is Frank William Abagnale. And number three. My name is Frank William Abagnale. Don't miss a word of the various life stories of Frank William Abagnale. I, Frank William Abagnale, am known as the world's greatest imposter, and no wonder. In the course of my nefarious career, I've pounded myself off as a doctor, lawyer, college instructor, stockbroker, and airline pilot. To become an airline pilot, I merely bought a plastic ID card for $5, affixed an airline logo from a model plane hobby kit, and in no time at all, was co-pilot for a major airline. As a bogus lawyer, I actually worked on a state attorney general staff. For six years, I also cashed over $2,500,000 in bad checks in 26 countries. Ultimately, I was sentenced to 72 years in prison. I served one year in France, one year in Sweden. I then served four years in a federal prison in this country. Paroled, I now devote my life to the prevention and detection of crime. Signed, Frank William Abagnale. <laughs> I'll tell you what's so funny. Yeah. He, the real one, he passes two and a half million dollars in bad checks. I took two pair of pants that a tailor had to leave a deposit. How do you figure that? <laughs> and we'll be back with some questions right Honest after this. Well, I'm sure, panel, not one of you have forgotten that the three gentlemen over there all claim to be Frank William Abagnale, who has had a career as a doctor, a college professor, and an airline pilot not one of which he was qualified for. So, for the first time, he's gonna have to tell the truth, and we're gonna start our questioning with Kitty. Thank you. Well, whoever you are, I don't think you're exactly to be exact, congratulated, <laughs> but it is a marvelous story. Uh, number one, why, with all your talent, and you're obviously a very bright fellow, why didn't you go in for a legitimate profession? It was really a question of dollars and cents. When I was a, a young man, I needed the money, and I thought this, list of careers were the easiest way to get it. I see. Number two, uh, how, well, how come you stayed on the state's attorney staff of, of, for six years? They didn't catch you out. Uh, no, it wasn't for six years. It was approximately uh, one year. Oh, I see. Uh, but even so, they didn't catch you out, did no. they? Uh, number three, when you got your pilot's license, did you pilot the plane? 
I never piled a plane. Most of the time I spent in a jump seat. Which jump seat? I took other airlines that were not the brand that I had my pilot's license with that I was working for. Oh, and you mean you were traveling for nothing? I traveled, that's right, for nothing. I get it. Number two, what is the first thing you stole from? Uh, never actually stole anything. First thing I did was write a hot check. And what, where, what was it for? Uh, for about $60. And, you, and they cashed it? Yes. Buzzer, and we go down to Nipsey Russell. Uh, number one, there was a movie uh, called The Great Imposter, made by, uh, by it was pretty much the parallel to the story you told. Do you know who the star of that movie was? I believe it was Tony Curtis. Yes. Uh, number two, do you know who the uh, most famous gate crasher was of uh, all time? I don't believe so. Okay, let me go back to number one. Uh, what credentials were you required to show when you were a doctor? When I was a doctor? Yes. Well, I made up a series of uh, diplomas and certificates that uh, said that I graduated with honors from... So you falsified? Yes. I see. Now, n number three, uh, <laughs> I, I would be interested to know what you were arrested for. The actual charge was carrying forged documents, which in this case were checks. <laughs> and did you ever forge in any documents such as an airline pilot's identification or a lawyer's degree? The identification card was easy. Uh, basically, I had an identification card made at a standard place that makes them. Did you have to carry on some kind of a conversation so that people who were also in the profession might know something about you? I did a little reading before and after as I went along. Let's go to Peggy. Number two, did you ever give anybody medical advice? Uh, yes, I worked uh, for a year as chief resident of a hospital in Georgia. Uh, could I ask you, number two, which hospital? Uh, it was the Cobb County General Hospital in Marietta, Georgia. Uh-huh. Did anybody get well under your or would it vice versa? Uh, yeah, I had no problems. Uh, you didn't treat the big, the big jobs no. then, just fingernails and things like that, right? Okay, then. Number one, uh, you said you got a diploma from law schools. You made them up. Which law schools? I want to know if you really took the class. I took... I, did, I made up the uh, law degree from where though? From the University of uh, uh, from New York University. Uh huh. And, and did you? And, and where were you? What what state attorney's office did you work in? Which state? Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And that was too far away from to check up on you. Was exactly. That That's why I went there. Number three. Since you had all this money, two million five hundred thousand dollars in bad checks, are you still rich? <laughs> I have a few dollars left. And they didn't take it away from you? Internal Revenue took almost 90%. Those rats, they do it to everybody, though. Don't, no reason to feel bad about that. Number three, what's a deadhead? It's when you're flying, you're supposed to be on duty in another country, and you're just flying back for free to get there. Number three, what is that outfit you've got on? Buzzer. I mean, that looks like Paul Buzzer. Muni, and I am a fugitive from Paul Muni. <laughs> Speaking of Paul Muni, here's Bill Cullen with the questions. <laughs> uh, number two, I don't, ima I don't my imagine you mind embarrassing questions, so forgive me. This parole you have, is it real? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> how, yeah, yeah, yeah. My parole? Yes, sir. Yes, it expires in 1981. Uh, no, no, I'm just asking because uh, how are we to know this is really a parole you have? Number one, you said, it is stated here, Joe said, I, in no time at all, I was a co-pilot. For the record, can I clear any, something up? Were you a co-pilot in the cockpit of an airplane? Not actually, no. And were you number two? Uh, no, not and actually. And number three? No. Good. That's a relief for all of us who must from time to time. <laughs> that is so, certainly true. <laughs> what you did, number three, was just utilize the privileges that a co-pilot gets as far as flying for nothing. And That's things right. Like the that. special treatment and the fact that I could sit up with the pilot and co-pilot while we were flying. When you were doctor number three, did you make house calls? Never did. <laughs> See there, he's, that's a real good imitation if you get... <laughs> okay, that means now that our game is over and it is time to vote. They must mark their ballots, no consultation, no change. And do you think it's number one? Or do you think it's number two? Or do you think it's number three? We pay $50 for each incorrect answer, $500 if all the answers are wrong, the votes, and Kitty, you got us started. How did you vote? Well, it's very difficult because number one has that sweet, honest, open face that any mother would love. Number two looks like a serious fellow you trust as a doctor or a resident, but number three seemed to know all the answers about deadheading and the internal revenue and all that, so I voted for number three. Number three, all right. Let's go to see how Nipsey voted now. Well, usually I find that when you're, when you're flying false colors, 
the less you say, the better chance you have of getting away with it. Number three, kind of laid back. And uh, okay. one phony knows another when he sees me. <laughs> <laughs> one phony knows another. All right. Let's go to Peggy. How did you vote, Peg? Well, I didn't go along with the crowd. N number three knew about deadhead and the internal revenue, but practically everybody does. Now look at number one. He almost looks like a priest. I mean, he could fool anybody. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> you just gave him a new idea. <laughs> <laughs> Nipsey said he just got a new idea. All right. Bill Cullen, how did you vote? Well, I don't know. I went along with, with the other votes. Number three, he, he's, he looks like the kind of guy who could talk me out of anything that I still have. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't know if I said it, but fifty dollars for each incorrect vote. If all the votes are wrong, yeah. it's five hundred dollars. I yeah. just thought I'd say that. Guys. Oh dear. Oh. oh. Okay. Here we go. Now, will the real Frank William Abagnale please stand up? Strike three, folks. Oh. <laughs> And the lawyers and the bankers, what chance did we have? <laughs> That's right. Hey, you're still good at your racket. But I tell you, it was a team effort. I want you to listen carefully and closely to what the imposters do. Number one, very loudly and very clearly, what is your name and what do you do? I have to tell the truth. Yeah. Yes. My name is Leonard Dembo. I'm the principal of a high school, and Peggy will be glad to know that I am a Catholic priest. <laughs> Number two has to go to confession to him backstage. <laughs> That's the thing. Let's find out who number three is, who got three votes. What is your name and what do you do? My name is Richard Lawrence. I'm president of Law Enforcement Associates. We manufacture police equipment and lie detectors. <laughs> you one question you have engineered some extraordinary <laughs> escapes tell us about one of them uh, well I'm the only man to ever successfully escape from the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary in Atlanta Georgia yeah. uh, How? since it's impossible to get over the walls or to come out physically I impersonate a federal prison inspector and walked out of the prison <laughs> You just tell the people you have another incident like that Will you just uh, yeah I had a case where the police had my hotel room surrounded in Atlanta uh, I went out the back door and I had a suit on. As I stepped out the back door, two officers came around the corner and they said, hey, you, hold it. And I just turned around to them and said, my name is Davis, FBI. And they said, oh, excuse me, sir. And I sent him around back front. <laughs> Listen, I want to show you some pictures now. He's actually had nerve enough to take pictures of when he was posing as a doctor, as an airline pilot. And I want to show you Frank as a uh, medic. Take a look. There he is, Boy. as Dr. Imposter right there. Mm. A regular Marcus Welby. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is as a pilot. Boy, well, he, he could, looks very official, doesn't he? Back. He could bribe So there up. he is. So thank you very much, Frank. Thank you, she our two imposters, yeah. for playing our game to tell the truth. <laughs> well, how about that one? Well, hockey fans among you know that the New York Islanders have become a real good hockey team. And we're going to, well, in fact, so good they have one of their coaches is a woman. And we're going to meet her in just a minute. Now let's meet our hockey coach. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Barbara Williams. Number two. My name is Barbara Williams. And number three. My name is Barbara Williams. Here is Barbara Williams' skating story. I, Barbara Williams, am the first woman to coach in the National Hockey League. My specific job is to teach the New York Islanders the art of power skating. I show the players how to utilize the edges of their skates more effectively how to increase their speed while conserving energy, and how to use their weight for maximum balance. One drill calls for a player to lock his arms against mine. 
then to push on me as hard as he can and to try and knock me down on the ice. I come by my skating expertise quite legitimately. Not only is my level of skating that of a silver medalist in figures and dance, I am also a former speed skater. Signed, Barbara Williams. <laughs> Okay, we'll start with our big hockey fan, Bill Cullen. Number two, I imagine, you, do you get to any of the games on the road when the team's playing on the road? Occasionally. Number three, if you had to pick the fastest skater in the National Hockey League, bar none, who would you choose? Bobby Bourne. And number one, how about you? Yvonne Cornoyer. Uh, I have one more name. Number two, do you want to pick one that you think is the fastest? Is he still skating? Uh-huh. I'd go with Cornway. Is there is there anyone else on Cornway's team who also? Well, I, I Maurice Richard, but he's not still skating anymore. The Rocket. Uh, the Maurice uh, Maurice Richard is the Rocket. Who do you pick? Uh, yeah, who? I pick a guy by the name of Martin now with Montreal who really can turn it on up the side. Anyway, do okay. you, you uh, Cornway? Where do you? Why did you ask me a question? Joe? So that we get the buzzer and get Kitty in there, a real expert. Okay, Kitty. <laughs> Number one, uh, are these men or women that you're teaching? Men. Men, and. <laughs> <laughs> Not field hockey, Kitty. Ice hockey. Ice have, hockey. Don't, ice. don't they have girl teams of ice hockey? Not the way the East players look. No. no. All right. No. Well, anyway, maybe they will someday. Uh, number two, not. when these men push against you and try to knock you down, how do you save yourself from falling? I, and what is the technique you use? I use the edges of my skate. And? I turn the edges in, and then they can't push me over. There's no way they can push me over. Uh-huh. And number three, how has this improved your team's performance? Their speed. They're a much faster team. And number one, do they win a lot more? Well, we just lost against Montreal, but they had a good year. In general? Yes. Let's move down to Nipsey. Number three, are you coaching hockey or just skating technique? Skating techniques. And number one, do you know anything about the strategy of the game of hockey? I'm learning from the players. I see. Number two, who was uh, Yvonne Durrell? Don't know. Never heard the name. Uh, number two, sticking with number two, uh, most uh, of the hockey skating I see on defense is going backwards. How does one power skate backwards? Are you talking to me? Yes, Sorry. number oh, two. You put the edges of your skate out, and you uh, turn the edges out, and you, you can skate backward a lot better. I see. Uh, number one, and, and on hockey skates, is there a, a little a riveting at the toe of the skate for quick stopping, as there is in figure skating? No. Uh, all right, not. <laughs> Let's move over to Peggy. Thank you. Number two, do, they, do, do, do professional hockey teams provide a dentist for the people, or do they have to pay for that themselves? <laughs> well, they're covered under a major medical plan. For the dentistry, because I notice there's a lot of missing teeth in hockey players. Uh, number one, in which town is the Nassau Coliseum? Uniondale, Long Island. Thank you. And uh, number three, what's the hat trick? The hat trick is to score three goals in one game. Thank you. And number one, what uh, Jean Rattel, what does he play for in what position? Which team does he play Rattel for? Rattel plays for the Boston Bruins, right wing. Thank you. And uh, number three, the Islanders, how long have the Islanders had their, been out there? How, long is their, how old is their franchise? Six years. Thank you. Number two, where is Dennis Potter? That means that our game is over and now it's time to vote. They must mark their ballots and do you think it's number one? Or do you think it's number two? Or do you think it is number three? Okay, the ballots are all marked, and Bill Cullen, how did you get voting there? In spite of the fact that number one had Rattel skating in the wrong position, yeah. she had the right team, but I think it was number, I think it's number one. I'm voting you for You think it's number one. Kitty. I think it's number one. She's very serious about it. Okay, Nipsey. Gave us the most information about teams, number one. Okay, you gonna make it unanimous, Peg? No, if I don't, if I know that John Rotel is in the right wing, shouldn't she know it? I voted for three. Number three, okay, just a little reminder now, if all the votes are wrong, $500. <laughs> I thought I would throw that <laughs> oh, in there, come folks. On. I think, oh, hey, I, I think Peg is Okay, right. yeah. Willie Real, Barbara <laughs> Williams, please stand up. Ah. Let's, yeah. let's find out who the imposters are. Number two, what is your name and what do you do? My name's Patricia Hamilton, and I'm director of the Hamilton Gallery of Contemporary Art in New York City. <laughs> I knew that. Yeah. Number three, what is your name and what do you do? 
My name is Regina Henry, and I'm advertising and public relations manager of the Plaza Hotel. Who's <laughs> that guy? He is Barbara, since most of the players are Canadians and they grow up actually on ice skates and are pretty good skaters, what kind of a selling job did you have to do to get the job? How could you convince them? Well, first of all, most hockey players have never had a skating lesson in their lives. You know, even um, the Canadian players, they've had a lot of opportunity to skate, but they maybe have, they're skating with the wrong shoulder or not having their body in the right position mm -hmm. or not really using the edges, getting the most out of the thrust of their skates. So I started working with Bobby Nystrom and some of the other players came along. And I guess seeing that I could skate right alongside of the players and that I could excel doing certain exercises convinced them. And the certain players that I have worked with did excel in balance or, Once you, know, you proved you could do it, they just went right along, huh? Yeah, yeah I never great. had a problem. I know being blonde and everything, but they no, never did, That didn't hurt problem. your chances at all, Barbara, I'll tell you that. But we thank you for playing to tell the truth, and thank you, our two imposters. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> we have just five seconds, so we're going to go over and see the imposter. Join us again. So long. In addition to the cash awards, our first team of challengers will be... Name something you squeeze. Peanut butter. They answer the questions. During what months of pregnancy does a woman begin to look pregnant? September. And he questions the answers. You don't use narcotics, do you, Bob? Catch five hours of Family Feud's craziest Q&As. Name something that people take with them to the bath. A duck. On some of the Feud's most memorable days. Survey says it's the best of Family Feud Marathon, tomorrow starting at 7, 6 central.